Let's uh, bring in Kami Akhavan now, the Executive Director of the USC Centre for Political Future. So how much does this upend the political game, the political contest this time, Kami? Well, obviously, it's quite disruptive. This is the latest a front runner has dropped out of the nomination process ever in US history. We have what seems like an inevitable candidate in Kamala Harris to become the presumptive nominee for the Democrats. And the question is going to be, can she retain that front seat right now? The conventional wisdom is that she is going to be the nominee. Mm. She's already secured endorsements from the Clintons, from the Congressional Black Caucus, from the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, from the Progressive Caucus. She does seem inevitable as the choice. She's already run an ad against Trump, and the Trump team has already run ads against her. So it seems like that's what's going to happen but these are wild times and things we didn't expect to happen are happening now. So I wouldn't quite close that book yet. Calls to Gavin Newsom's office, though, at the moment uh, are not being answered. Might he have a different view of things? Gavin Newsom has worked with Kamala Harris for much of his career. She was the attorney general in the state where he was governor, where he was a mayor. I presume that Gavin Newsom is not going to commit some form of political suicide and try to come out against Kamala Harris. But he's already indicated privately that he does not want to be a vice presidential pick. I think he's going to wait and bide his time until 2028 and consider running then. There will be um, a short-term sugar hit for sure. Let's say it is Kamala Harris. Uh, you know, now that it's not Joe Biden, that argument about age uh, is, is dead and buried for now. Now that you're looking at a, a much younger candidate. So, again, there will be that sugar hit, but then how long will it be before those attack ads from the Republicans start being quite effective when you've got so many illegal migrants crossing the border from Mexico into the United States? It, you know, that, that, that could well be some quite powerful. Uh, absolutely. Right now, when you look at polls comparing Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump, Kamala Harris is performing about the same as Joe Biden, doing a little better in some places like North Carolina. But what's interesting is that among Republicans who did not support Trump, when you ask them now, would you support Kamala Harris, they're less likely to be interested in her and more likely to go back mm. to Trump. Might, might she also be you know, caught up in the argument that uh, Republicans are pushing at the moment too, that she was involved in a cover-up? in terms of saving for Joe Biden and his obvious mental decline? That argument will be made forcefully. It has been made over the last few hours and in the previous days that there has been a cover-up and she's been involved. But what really matters is you look at the presidential race in the United States will come down to five, six, perhaps seven different states. So the messaging is really micro-targeting voters in those states and what kinds of messages are resonating with them. Mm -hmm. And be sure that assuming it's Kamala Harris as the presidential nominee, who she picks to be yeah. her vice presidential nominee will have everything to do with the demographics in those states. Yeah, it will definitely come from one of those swing states for sure. Kami, thanks for your time.